Uh, we're joined now on the programme by Tony Danker, Director General of the Confederation of British Industry. Tony, great to have you on this morning. Um, no doubt you have poured over that 60-page uh, roadmap to freedom, as some have called it, very, very closely indeed. What do you, what do you make of it? Well, look, uh, good morning. I think it is definitely a welcome step forward, and it comes on the back of some good news medically you've just cited, and also, obviously, the great success of the vaccination program. The big judgment call here was to go slower in a more managed way in order to avoid the stop start of lockdowns of the last year. And I think broadly speaking, business will welcome that. I think business will also welcome, by the way, schools going back first. Not only is that good for our children, but it's good for the economy. We learned in the last year that great enablers of the economy, like schools being open and transport operating, are key to economic success. So I'm sure we'll come on to talk about some of the sectors that aren't overly uh, happy and are quite concerned this morning. But in broad terms, I think it's really a welcome step forward. Well, let's dive straight on into it then, Tony. I mean, who, who this morning is waking up feeling particularly dissatisfied uh, with that which they heard from the PM? Yeah, look, I think the hospitality sector, clearly, uh, this is later than they would have hoped for. You have to remember these businesses have been out for a long time. They also missed the golden quarter at the end of last year, which was hugely important to their cash flow. I also think the aviation sector is something we've got to watch incredibly closely. People understand, I believe, why there are travel bans in place or uh, airport, uh, airport closures and bans in place and the quarantine system. But there's a devastating impact for our aviation sector if we don't resolve that soon. And look, we are going to have to wait uh, a week or 10 days to find out whether or not they're still going to get support. So that's an unfortunate period of anxiety for businesses. We hope they're going to be supported in next week's budget. But I think it's really clear that for some of them, this will be later than they would have hoped for. And we have to be attentive to that. Uh, Tony, we are moving from a system that's been a system of restrictions that's been administered on a regional to, to one that's been administered on a, on a national basis. Clearly, the regional approach had its, had its benefits. You could target measures where they needed to be, had its drawbacks, made it very difficult for certain parts of the country to ever move out of lockdown. What are your members saying about the fact that some parts of the country could be in a position to open up, if not entirely, then then as close to that as possible when, when others are not and they're being dragged, in, dragged down essentially in terms of progress? Look, I think for most businesses, certainly larger businesses, uh, the huge level of complexity of regional tiering uh, was not helpful. Mm. Uh, and what we still have is a degree of misalignment between devolved nations uh, and England. And uh, for businesses that are national, that's obviously an added complexity. Or if you're a business that operates across the Scottish English border or the Welsh English border, then there still being not quite enough alignment is still a complication. But I think on the whole, people will welcome the idea that there's a national system in place, at least for England, and they'll actually want more and more alignment through the next six to 12 months between all the devolved nations. Um, and, and Tony, just, just, just finally, <laughs> We are all hoping that things return to some sense of normality in the not-too-distant future. But every business now has to build into their models the fact that COVID-19 will be circulating in the population for quite some time. Yeah, that's right. Look, I think there's... Look, uh, this announcement is very good news. There's an awful lot of detail to come if you are an employer, if you are running a business. First of all, as you say, there's the financial support that comes in part two of this announcement, i.e. the budget next week. There's then a whole set of workplace guidance we need to come back to. Remember the stuff about one meter or two meters. Remember about whether or not we can work from home or we can go into the office. And there's also quite a lot to put in place around a workplace testing regime, which has just been extended for businesses over 50 uh, employees uh, to the end of June with the government supporting that. But I think you're right. We're going to be in a world of workplace testing for COVID for the next 12 months and beyond because we'll have to keep an eye out for new variants. So businesses this morning will have, will have pocketed last night's news. They'll have a broad framework in place, but they'll be wanting people like us to work with the government on much more detailed guidance for what reopening looks like. And as you say, for what living with the virus looks like, despite a world of hopefully complete vaccination or close to in the months ahead. Uh, Tony Danker, Director General of the CBI. Good to see you this morning. Thanks for being with us.